A few months ago, we took this guy apart so we could take out our cutlass bearing that had too much play in it. Of course, this wasn't straightforward, as nothing on our steel boat seems to be. When we took out the bearing, we realized that there was another sleeve in the shaft that was also going to need to come out. But it was going to make fitting another cutlass bearing in a bit more complicated. So that's the process we're bringing to you today. I'm Taryn, this is Logan, and this is Max. Our life rarely goes as planned, and this story is no different. But we are determined to rebuild our beautiful steel boat, even stronger than she was before. And we're bringing you along with us. I'm going to switch things up today and remove the bushing that we had in our stern tube. So this guy has to come out of here and this stainless set screw here is very stripped and seized. So I'm going to try a few tricks before I end up drilling it out. So hopefully it doesn't come to that. Sometimes this works. Oh, look at that. Sweet. Back to the old, uh, using this guy to cut this. That should be fun. through on this one yeah so I'm gonna make one more cut just over here and then try and pound this center piece out and then it should just I don't know hopefully come out That's what the new bearing is going into then, hey? Yeah. But you have to do some work before the bearing can go in? Uh, we have to clean the stern tube out. So, I'm not exactly sure how I'm gonna do that yet. I think it's gonna involve a drill and a broom handle. <laughs> <laughs> you don't wanna try to blow it out with air? No, like it has to be wire brushed. Oh, okay. So that we can have a look, because now that we can actually see up here. Oh, fuck. It really doesn't look that bad. Can you, okay, whenever you're ready, I want to film it. Can you see in there? Mm hmm. Like, I was expecting it to be rusty. Yeah, it doesn't look rusty at all. It just looks like there's some sand in there. But I mean, you can't see all the way up either, but... No. Well, that's it right there. It ends right there. Where the black is? Well, you can see the end of it inside. Yeah. Like, it's hard because you can't really focus on it. But... Yeah, it's really hard to see it in the camera. Yeah, so that last bit must be mild steel, hey? The whole thing's mild steel. Oh, just galvanized. Yeah, I think it was galvanized. But not galvanized all the way back, obviously. Well, I mean, it's welded here. So it would have burnt off the... The galvanization, yeah. So, sorry, you can't see very well, but right in here, there's like a joint that lo where Logan's talking about the weld bean, and there's a little bit of rust in there. But again, you can't really see it on the camera. I don't think it's really... Yeah, I don't know. Not worried about it? I don't think it's worth worrying about. Hmm. So if it rusts through up here anywhere, like, 
because this is just plate that's been bent around it. Oh yeah, okay. But inside here, we had a hard time painting all of this. Mm -hmm. So if it rusts through anywhere up the length of this tube, mm -hmm. it can leak into the boat. Yeah. But... But we can't see that. This is the problem. Everything that's that it leaks into there runs into the engine room bilge. Okay. So, so then... So we should see it. Yeah, and we can actually, like, we do end up pulling the covers and checking this quite, a, quite often to make sure that the seal is actually doing what it's supposed to be doing. Okay. So now that I've got the bushing out of the stern tube, I'm just going to clean that out. And to do that, because I can't get past the... Go away, wasp. Can't get past the skeg to get this in there it jams up I'm going to take this broken broom handle make it small enough on one end to attach to a drill and then I'm gonna tape some stiff bristled uh, like plastic brushes on the other end and just run it through and see how much stuff I can clean off that's the plan Working pretty well. That's awesome. Well, that worked pretty well, hey? Did it? Yeah. It was knocking stuff out the other end, so. I don't know what's in that tube, but it's gross. Oh, yeah? Yeah. The ends of the brush are just clogged with shit. purchased a new bearing that was made of fiberglass and rubber instead of brass and rubber. It fits the shaft well, but getting it into the boat was far from straightforward. I mean, it's as tight as it's going to get on this shaft. Is that good enough, though? Yep. Yeah, it's just barely it got any play, and that'll crush a bit, too. Like, before, it was like clunk, 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 clunk. Yeah. And now, like, you can hardly feel it. It fits the shaft well, but getting it into the boat was far from straightforward. So the big problem we're running into with trying to install this new cutlass bearing is that the shaft has been machined, but it hasn't been machined the same length as this bearing is. It was machined, I don't know, like an inch or inch and a half shorter. And it's tube. Oh, sorry, the tube. No. It's the machine, not the shaft. And not only that, but the tube has also been machined wider than this new bearing. Is it in there? No. So that means that we're trying to figure out how the heck we're going to get this bearing not only in there, but then to stay in there and be tight once it's in there. In hindsight, we probably should have kept that brass sleeve in there, but it kind of got messed up when we were trying to take that first cutlass bearing out, so... Now it's a matter of figuring out how to solve this problem, which is not an easy problem to solve. Okay, so what I'm trying to do here is inside this tube, there's a ridge um, about four and a half inches in, or four inches in, 
and I have to take five thou off the thickness of the pipe to be able to get the bushing all the way in. Um, once that's done, it's a little sloppy on the outside, so I have to build that up with epoxy and then sand it down to the appropriate size. That's how we're going to fix this. And I'm just trying to do it. This is what I have. It's not going to be perfect, but it will work. So now, you can tap this in, see it's starting to go in, yep. that's what you want. <laughs> Perfect. So now I have to add approximately five thousandths of an inch of material around the outside of this. That's ridiculous, that's so small. Yeah, I think what happened was somebody had machined it and screwed up. Mm. And then put a bushing in and an underset, like a, I guess it would be a standard size because this is more of a, not really a standard size. Okay. But, had it not been machined, this would have fit with the shaft that we have and everything would work together. So, yeah, ridiculous. The shit you have to do. So what are you going to do to fill that extra, like, tiny, tiny bit of space? With epoxy. Mm -hmm. And gladiol silica. any better really um, yeah and this is where we left the project until the paint was back on the boat a couple of months later today I'm going to try and install the cutlass bearing sorry for the sound it's raining and it's quite loud but basically I'm gonna use this um, I've put thick and epoxy in here and I'm just gonna take and machine it down with this guy and it should be able to get the cutlass in I know it's not exactly the proper way of doing it but this is what I have and I'm gonna try this first I really want to be straight on when I do this. So I'm going to modify this.
it looks pretty good for being round and it is an interference fit so it should all be good I just have to paint the tube further back where I've accidentally gone a little bit far with the um, sanding wheel and yeah just make sure it's all nice and painted inside before I pound in the, the cutlass bearing and like this is probably only like 0.25 of a millimeter thick like it was just very thin epoxy because the inside of the um, shaft log had been machined to receive a bushing it would have been nice if it hadn't been machined for that bushing because then the correct sized um, cutlass bearing would have just fit but anyways it is what it is um, we're built back to about the same uh, thickness and it is thickened epoxy with the microfibers 403 and the colloidal silica it should be plenty strong because this bearing is longer than the machine part was it will be still sticking in about an inch just over an inch into into the proper size of the this the shaft log that wasn't machined so it's uh it's not fully going to be relying on the epoxy but anyways we'll see how it works so Gonna make sure that that is straight up and down, and hopefully this will just uh, tap into place. That's why they make rubber hammers. Might have to rethink this one. Yeah. I don't know if I'm gonna get it that last little, <laughs> little bit. Oh my god, that actually worked. Whew. Big stress relief or what? Yeah. That is more of a stress relief than it was actually hard work. That fit in really nice and snug. After I'm a lot of work on your part. Very happy with how that fits. So when it like went in and stopped going in and then it finally went again yeah that's where the ridge was from where it had previously been machined out for a smaller bushing mm. so I actually had to take and ream that out to the proper size because it's been um, I think the reason was this pipe's been ovaled slightly because it's welded Okay. And then 
so it's not exactly round, so. Yeah, I think I was able to get it pretty good. And that fits in nice and snug. There's no movement whatsoever. And now we can put the set screws in where they belong. Sweet. And the prop should fit on. And everything should be okay. Yay! I hope. Me too. I mean, it's not a whole lot that can go wrong. This faces upwards. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> I mean, like, you can machine a little, a very little bit of an angle from the bottom here, but it didn't look like it was. It looked like it had just, they'd machined it to make it round, put a bushing in, because then it was over... Uh, to fit a cheaper bearing in it, basically, I think is what they did. Because this bearing was, like, probably a third more than the other one. Right. Hmm. But, also, we couldn't get the other bearing out without wrecking the bushing, so... Yeah. Cool. Pretty much, yep. I'm happy with that. High five. Now I just have to drill into the fiberglass just a touch For and the run screws. the set screws in with some Loctite on them. Sweet. Yeah. I'm happy with that. That's way, way better than it was. Yeah, good. See, it's tight up and down, but not side to side necessarily. Kind of a weird place to end this video, but that's about it for this project. It felt amazing to have the cutlass bearing and shaft back in because it means that the engine can go back in pretty soon. Thanks so much for watching, liking, commenting, and subscribing. We really appreciate it. And an extra big shout out to our patrons for coming along with us on this journey. See you next week.